Yeah. We are live, everybody. Again. Dramatic entrance. Woo! Um, <laughs> nobody's here. This is cool. We'll give it a minute to, for y'all to join up. Oh, there um, Hello. I will say, uh, hello. Real quick, we had a little switcheroo happen uh, due to uh, some scheduling conflict. We had Bobby Pinson coming on tonight who wrote Kings of the Dairy Queen parking lot with us, but he couldn't make it, so he's going to be tomorrow night, and tonight we're going to have Ben Phillips, who engineered this record. The and, one, the only. And he's the man. He's Y'all are going to love him. He He's the guy who made this record sound the way it does. He's by far the best smelling uh, recording engineer here in Nashville. Wouldn't you say so? Oh, absolutely. It, you know, musky, very... I think it's Adidas. I yeah. ask him all the time. It, I think he tried to keep it a secret, and then I I got it out of him. But he always smells so good and so clean. It like makes me feel like I need to bathe more. I figured once a week's about good, right? Yeah, well, sorry I just got confused. He just said, Everett is live. I'm like, are we on your page? No, I don't think we are. Yes, are very are musky. Page? Are we on your page? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, he either wears Adidas or he wears the the old... Uh, Keith Urban came out with the cologne a few years back that Anthony used to wear. I, ben, there, there's Ben right there. He's going to... Oh, boy. <laughs> but yeah, we. Uh, so the song we're going to be talking about... Sorry if I'm repeating stuff, but... Uh, the song we're going to talk about this... Uh, Session of seven songs in seven days is way back. Wrote it with Brent Cobb. We were going to talk about Kings with Dairy Queen Parking Lot, the title track, but Bobby is an enigma, and who knows, he might be on his way to Mars right now. <laughs> ben is ready to hang with us, and we're going to talk. He is the tracking engineer. Let's go ahead and get him on here. Uh, let's, let me just flip up here. Oh, where'd you go, Ben? Mm. There he is. Wait. Oh. Hey, Ben, can you try to join again? <laughs> oh, did he join? Oh, he did. Dang it. Am I doing something wrong? I think you go the other way, maybe. No? All right, I guess we're going to have to get... Ben, can you request to join us again? Or to, uh, you know... I'm sorry, we suck at this stuff. Technology, man. We hope everybody's doing all right out there tonight. We, uh, we've been busy all day. Hey, Falcon. Yeah, it's good seeing all these people rise yeah. up the country. Hannah. My wife, Caroline, joined. I believe uh, I believe my wife and little boy are joining in from home. <clears throat> uh, at some point, I don't know if they're on here now, but... Let's see. Let's see if we got... Oh, there's Craig. Hey, Craig. Up? Sorry, I'm trying to... All right, Ben, where are you? Oh, at? it was down there. I know it didn't say join now. Oh, it didn't? It just said wave. I'm so sorry that we suck at this. We're getting there, y'all. We promise. Oh, well, I waved at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it there is. There you go. All right. Thanks, Ben. Here he comes. Go live with Benjamin C. Phillips. Waiting on Ben. Waiting. Waiting. Oh. Here he comes. Hey. hey! What's up? Sorry, it's a little dark out here. I have a very important question for you. Oh, yeah? What's that? What is the C in your... What is your middle name? Uh, Calvin. Wow. I love that. Benjamin Actually, Calvin. Very presidential. Yeah, thanks. Grandfather's name. <laughs> Can I just start calling you Calvin? I mean, I love Ben and all that. that just you totally can. I probably will not respond. <laughs> <laughs> I probably, probably won't that. even notice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So for those of y'all on here, I know we said this earlier, but this is the great Ben Phillips. We, uh, you know, we're doing mostly songwriters this week, but we have two special guests, Ben being one of them, and Luke Laird is going to be next week uh, who produced this record. But Ben, not only was he the tracking engineer, which is the person inside the studio setting up the mics, making sure everything's right, turning the knobs, and he can get into more detail on, on how that works. But and that, but he also mixed the record, which means after it's recorded, 
he balances everything and EQs it and makes it sound beautiful. So um, I think today, Ben, we're going to talk more specifically on the song Way Back, if that's cool with you. Yeah, absolutely. We can talk about whatever. Yeah. What kind of, uh, what kind of shoes are you wearing right now? <laughs> Dan or boots. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing no shoes. No shoes. Yeah, comfy. I love it. From here down, you do not want to <laughs> you <don't> trust me. <laughs> Oh, we were just talking about how great you smell. What you wearing? Some of that fine ass cologne you always have to. No, yeah, uh, I. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's been so. This morning was so long ago. I'm maybe I did this morning, but that was a lifetime ago. It feels like. Is it weird? Does it does it ever weird you out that pretty much every time I see you, I'm like, dude, you smell good. What is? <laughs> I I think it's funny. I well, I appreciate that you notice. <laughs> My smeller it is a little overactive some or most of the time. Yeah. I wish he bragged on me like that, Ben. I don't I get no compliments. You, you, you smell. Great. I'm consistent. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So way back. Yeah, man. What's your feelings on that song? Did I love you... that track. That that one took a little bit of, if I remember correctly, that took a little bit of um. That took a little bit of work to get it there. We yeah, had sure. to mess around with some few different things, some few arrangements, and. Uh, we tried a bunch of different things and trying to get things balanced right. And I remember because there was like that concert bass drum on there. Yeah. Getting that and the drums and the guitars to feel right together. It it took a minute, but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the journey for sure. Mm -hmm. Would you would you agree that even though I, I feel like where we landed, it, it feels like a, a spacey production, yeah. spacey being there. It doesn't feel like there's a wall of sound. <clears throat> Is that, would you agree that it's actually a fairly dense production? Uh, dense. Well, I don't think anything on the record is really dense it, because I, I think it dense is like there's a lot of things going on. And I, I think y'all are very um judicious in what y'all chose to keep and, and what you chose to get rid of. That's you a big thought, word. Yeah, you know, the only things that mattered were stayed and everything else was kind of gone, which which I think helps a lot. I think helps create the space and depth and everything along with the uh, – along with – Everything so. Oh, my wife just brought up the cologne, so I could tell you a little. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Back to the previous conversation. Maybe we'll get a sponsorship from that beautiful cologne you wear. <laughs> I know, right? So what, what is What's that? What is it then? Allure Sport. Oh, boy. I don't know. Something I found many moons ago, and I've liked it. So, yeah. Awesome. Allure Sport. There you go. Man, you know. For, uh, just to kind of brag on you a little bit, um, you really are extraordinary in the studio. I mean, you're, we have great conversations with you when we're not, you know, working per se. Yeah. But in the studio, you, you are really amazing. I feel like a lot of times when we have an idea and we need some help, you know, I guess articulating that idea, uh, executing it, or even sometimes like going, okay, here's A and here's B. How do we connect yeah. Things. you're always so fantastic and so like you have no ego your your creative mind is always working on how to connect dots and how to make things flow you're just you really really are a fantastic engineer i, I mean and a fantastic human being as well but thanks man, yeah you really are great at what you do yeah and and for those of y'all out there that haven't been in the studio or, or worked in a studio the engineer in my opinion uh is just important if not the most important person in the studio they're the ones that agree if the knobs aren't turned right and the mics aren't placed right and uh the, they're not capturing the vibe that you know that starts from hopefully our spirits or whatever to get onto microphones because it's all going through so much stuff and for it to come out authentic and real as we're trying to make it it's not an easy task it takes a lot of years of experience and ben we've worked with a handful of engineers and ben Anthony's right. You, in my opinion, are one of the best in Nashville, if not the the world, in my opinion. I feel like you're great about keeping things cool, keeping things rolling, so that when, you know, uh, Ben's like, come here, talk to his <laughs> wife. You got to hear this. <laughs> it's hard to remain creative and to keep a positive attitude. Sometimes in the studio, you know, musicians, producers, artists, we get frustrated or we get antsy. We get impatient. Whatever, you know, fill in the blank. We're we're, you know, uh, we can get 
But like, uh, you're really, really great about keeping the ball rolling, keeping the attitude upbeat. And like, that's so important on top of being really awesome at making things sound not just good, but spectacular. And it sounds like you, when you record drums, they sound like Ben Phillips recorded those damn drums. And that's like, that's pretty badass. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so much of it is just being able to um, read the room and pay attention to what's going on around me. And I think that's so important because I, I it's so much around problem solving. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, every, it's like whatever, it's almost like there's no such thing as plan A, everything is plan B because whatever you think is going to happen is not going to work out that way. So it's like, you always have to be able to roll with the punches and be able to problem solve. And that's what I like about it. It's like, you also, oh, I want to do this and I want to create something that sounds like this. And I go, okay, great. How am I going to actually, we're going to record that and get that in so it makes sense. And um, I love being able to solve that problem, you know, and, um, you know, there was a great assistant that day. I'm going blank on his name, but he was really helpful. And yeah. she, I mean, we both ran around a couple of times trying to go, okay, we got all these musicians ready and we got to track all this stuff. How are we going to get all this stuff um, going? And um, that's always a lot of fun to try to figure that out. Um, and he, even, on, even on Overdub, Anthony, you and I, you were playing guitar and we were sitting there going, great, how do we, how do we make this – you know, we hear this thing in our head and we want this to translate this way. What do, what do you need to play? How do we need to record it for this to sound right? Totally. And, uh, I don't know. That's part of the journey that's that's a lot of fun. But I, I also don't like it being bogged down in those little details, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like it's like a lot of that stuff kind of works itself out, I notice, as you keep going. If something's not clicking, yeah, move on rather yeah. than trying to figure out why it's not clicking. Okay, let's move on and then maybe we'll circle back around. But That's I, probably good. Life here. I, yeah, I mean, I just hate sitting and getting stuck in in one thing. You know, it's like, okay, let's move, let's let's <laughs> let's let's keep the momentum going, let's keep the mojo happening. You know, I don't want to get bogged down because then then everything stops and everybody goes like, what's happening? And everybody gets bored and it just gets everybody gets starts getting frustrated and you know. And I was you know many years being a session player and it's like um, I know what that's like sitting there waiting for things to happen and you just get bored and you're like. Why am I here? What's happening right now? <laughs> I'm Dude, I, was, I thought I was supposed to be playing, and now I'm just sitting around, you know? Right. Speaking of that, session player, a lot of people out there don't know that you're uh, an accomplished, fantastic drummer. Like, how, how did you? Well, ben played on most of my demos when I first came yeah. in. Dude, how did you get into this business? How did you decide, like, I'm going to get to Nashville and, and do this damn thing? Uh, yeah. Well, that took a long time. It's a... It was not easy. Um, I, I went to Belmont many years ago, and I, I studied music business and engineering there. Um, most people probably don't realize that because most people first knew me as a drummer because I, I soon quickly decided that I wanted to be a drummer. I was going to be a drummer more than an engineer when I graduated college, and so that's what I started doing. And, um, and uh, that didn't work out for a lot of years. A lot of years, I was not able to do that for a living. Mm -hmm. and, um, it took a long time. Because I never really wanted to play on the road. And when you're in 22, that's pretty much the only gig you can get is mm -hmm. like playing a club or playing on the road. Yeah. And even those are hard to come by. And so I never really wanted to do that. I, I, I did it a little while, but it was never my, never my thing. But uh, And then I quit for a few years, and then I came back, and then I was like, I'm going to engineer and play drums, and I started having a – built a studio and that's when I started doing it and I just started doing anything that would come around really I mean that's the very short version but yeah it yeah took a lot of years it right. took a lot of years it took about 10 years to really kind of get things I mean I'd, I'd done some stuff in that 10 years it wasn't like I didn't do anything but it was I'm sure stuff that y'all never heard of <laughs> well you know that's one thing I've noticed in this town whether you're a songwriter an artist an engineer even our publishers and things like that, everybody's put in the time yeah. to get where they're at, or most people have, you know? And yeah. uh, that makes this town kind of cool. I feel like um, it makes you feel like we've we've all, you know, grinded, you know, and now we have something in common, and we've all fought, and then when somebody has a little bit of success, you can kind of cheer them on a little bit, because you know yeah. how difficult it is to... Um, so... With with this particular record, do you remember when we were tracking it? Did you have any 
moments of like uh wow moments or like this is this is cool any certain song any certain part that comes to mind oh man there was a lot um i'm trying to remember not to uh, put you on the spot here i know that's a it, it was back in february when we were doing this it was a minute ago yeah it feels like five years ago it does feel like five years ago yes it does there's a lot has happened since then um trying to i remember uh dairy queen parking lot tracking that going like holy crap yeah <laughs> this feels pretty freaking awesome and then uh well there's another song that's not on this seven songs wild woman oh um, yeah <laughs> When that, when that when that one happened, I was like, "Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is pretty bad. so." Wow. Um, yeah, there's a there's definitely a a few of those moments. Um, in Mama, that's that's on this one. I remember when you sang that. That was just like, yeah, everything just kind of came together. What was the hardest? What what would you say was the hardest? Uh part of this whole thing because you tracked it you know you tracking engineer and then you edited it you did so much work i feel like you're the mvp honestly of this whole damn thing like you <laughs> uh, but what, what would you say was the the most difficult uh part of this process for you having having to deal with us no or no no not at all that's that was easy peasy um the most difficult part that's a good question i don't know if there was really anything all that difficult on it it wasn't you're just that good no, no, it wasn't. It was. I'm not that good, but the the songs and the performing was 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 so good. I it just it really didn't um, require anything all that difficult. I'm trying to remember. I I think for me was with just tracking and doing the overdubs. For me, it was just really about capturing the vibe of each one of the songs because each one of the songs has a slightly different personality some of them more than others mm -hmm. um, and i i think for me just being cognizant of what that personality was and sometimes we had a specific demo to go off of or a work tape there were, maybe we had a vibe that was in the realm of the right idea and so we we didn't want to stray too far from that and other times we wanted to stray really far from that and and i think for me just being able to be focused on on what that vibe and mood needed to be and just of and being cognizant of what all, all the other parts were doing you I mean everything down from the the drum sounds and the bass tones and how many notes this was playing and this was playing and then all the different arrangements and parts and being able to pay attention to that and how all that was fitting together um because once you do that in the tracking and overdub i mean i mean we muted. I think every after after we did that, I mean, you sang and you did a few guitar parts, and we muted some stuff, and that was pretty much it. You know, I mean, it was, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't anything all that complicated. It wasn't It wasn't like we had to go twenty rounds and retract this and redo this and add this. It wasn't any of that. It's like we tracked it, we overdubbed it, you sang it, and we muted a. I remember the craziest thing was to me was we muted a bunch of stuff. Yeah. You know, and there's a, some of those songs, a lot of the stuff, I feel bad to the other guys who played it. It wasn't that they played anything bad. It just, um, like you said, it just, it, like we said earlier, it just wasn't necessary to. Well, too much pain on it. Yeah. Dude, speaking of, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I saw something that was so cool the other day. I just wanted to share this with you all. It uh, Somebody was saying something like, if, uh, if like art on the walls, like a painting or a, photographer uh photography is how we decorate space is music how we de decorate time and it just went like my brain exploded wow and i was like wow you know um decorating time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah an interesting concept i guess we have you know we were using our our own paint brushes for this session i felt like I, I, it, for me personally, it was the quickest recording session ever as far as like from start to finish yeah. before you started mixing it. I think it was two weeks we did 14 songs and all overdubs, maybe yeah. two and a half weeks or something. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just keeping it simple, you know, we were just trying to, 
It was so like some of that was delayed because picture. some of that was delayed because Anthony started throwing up. So oh right, <laughs> he got sick. <laughs> yeah. One of those days. <laughs> That's right. Put a little little uh, context here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Buddy. No, no. He he got sick from his son. No, it was a, just a little bug going around. <laughs> yeah, I had almost made it through the the first two years of him being alive without being uh, puked on, and yeah. it. In one 24-hour period, it like I pretty much my whole person had been puked on, and I was like, ah, I probably won't get it. And I think it was two days later, or the next day rather, next day, I was, yeah. like I might get sick. And then, sure enough, we had to press pause because little Freddie got me sick. Yeah, it, it it happens. I've I've been there. I've been puked on and gotten sick the next day myself, and it oh, it sucks. Yeah. And <laughs> speaking of uh, little ones, I remember when when we were mixing uh this record we, we had to do a lot of stuff remotely you know and yeah so you'd be at your house and we'd be at our house you know and yeah. a lot of me and you you know we would all brent and i and luke uh we would get our thoughts together you know compiled and then i would get on the phone with you we would facetime so i could see yeah. your pretty face and then you would we would listen to the audio over a, a high def link or whatever yeah. the hell and like be like, hey, you think that snare is a little too bright, man, <laughs> or whatever. Like, <laughs> it was kind of like, thank God for technology. But uh, I remember, like, over Facetime, I'd see your your little boy popping on the screen every now. Oh and yeah, day. yeah, constantly. He he came home tonight and stuck his head out the window. Yeah, just a moment ago. Yeah, <laughs> always there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. we might get in. We might get interrupted at some point. We'll, we'll Perfect. See. It's all good, man. <laughs> well, cool to have this conversation, and you know, especially for the people out there listening, because. You know, if you haven't been in the studio or whatever, I don't think people might realize how much detailed work that goes into making a record. How much just, I know for me and Anthony, we care so much about how it sounds and wanting to portray whatever is in us and what we're, what we're hearing to get on tape and out through the speakers. And man, you did such a great job on our vision. It, I remember, I remember this is gonna sound funny, but when I heard Can't Say No the first time, the first mix, I, I teared up. And it's a fun, happy song, but I was, yeah. <laughs> I was just going like, this sounds really great, man. It's it's exactly how I hoped it would sound. And that's not easy to do. You know, I'm sure you've mixed projects where the artist or something might have been like, I don't know, you know, or whatever. It's It takes a lot of magic to happen for everybody to go like, yes, I, I'm digging it. Does. It does take a lot of magic for that to happen, yeah. And sometimes that can be frustrating. But oh, I think that's one thing that, that y'all have done is y'all y'all taken the time to figure out the team and, and how – and when all, not only that, but you figured out your sound. I mean, y'all have recorded so many songs and gone down this road for so long trying to figure out what y'all sound like. And y'all really know what y'all sound like. And so that um, it makes it a lot easier because you already know what you sound like and well, you're going to sound like you're going to sound like you know well speaking of that you know uh another little i guess tidbit fact uh you know for everybody out there we were um we were working with you uh i guess about eight months or so before we got in the studio to cut this record we started doing some demos together because mm -hmm. for a long yeah. time and brent were doing all of our demos uh ourselves and uh, we were like, you know what, we should get we should get a band together and, and just, you know, try doing it old school again, you know, rather than uh, the more basically to, to kind of throw away some of the modern practices that can kind of get you caught up in your brain. Like, was that right? Is that cool? Is that good enough? Whatever. Where when you get a band together and a great engineer like yourself, you just go, you let it fly. Yeah, that was fun. We counted yeah. off, played the song and then we went, shit, that was cool. Yeah, let's keep that. Yeah. You know? The same yeah. on the demos that we were doing last year was the band that played on this record. Yeah. Tony and Evan. Yeah, yeah. Dave Cohen. Yeah. We used Dave Dorn a little bit Dave last Dorn, year, too. Dave Dorn was on, yeah. He's a, man, he's another beautiful musician. I love that guy. Dave, Dave Dorn, Dorn and Dave Cohen. Great or great, yeah. you know, people. What was it like <laughs> yeah. in the they, studio? Uh, they, oh, jokingly no. call, they jokingly call them Old Testament Jesus and New Testament Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably one of my favorite <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> that and uh, when we were listening to... Uh, uh was it eddie montgomery's yeah mess up takes oh shit and like all that like yeah yeah oh, oh yeah <laughs> the hero. Yeah, that one. <laughs> oh, 
Who had that? That was amazing. Was that Cohen? That was Luke. Luke that, was Luke. That. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah. We had a good time in the studio, man. I, I, I wish it's, it's tough. Like that project's done and I'm like, okay, let's do the next one now. But I know. we still, you know, we're, we're, I don't know. We, we were only seven songs deep on this project. We're a few days in. I'm like, what's next? You know, it's weird. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I got to work on being patient. Yeah. I, I'm ready too, man. And you know, I, it's funny. I, it feels a little funny sometimes to go like, man, that was the best recording session I've ever been a part of, but it really was, you know what I mean? Like, I hope that doesn't sound disingenuous because I've, I've heard people say that before. I'm like, really? You're the, the best time you've had in the studio. I'm like, for this particular project, it was, I mean, Anthony's right. It was just fun. And it kind of scared me a little bit because it was kind of, it seemed, it seemed like it was flowing too nice. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this is not right, you know? There was because 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 we were really only originally uh, the idea was to really only do twelve songs. Yeah, and things were going so smoothly. You're like, let's do fourteen. Because <laughs> amazingly, I, I remember y'all had, I think y'all had it down the list. I, I, I think I still have the list in the in the session folder. But it was like thirty or forty songs that y'all oh. wanted to cut, and it was originally like seventy or eighty that y'all yeah. like maybe, yeah. and you got it down to like thirty. That's right. Of like the yeses, and then you wound up cutting of the. Four, it's supposed to be 12 and you know, like you added i forgot which two we, we added but um i'm glad we did yeah we got the next three albums locked and loaded ready to go man i think we had right <laughs> i think we added can't say no oh really Is that, the one? that was on the ep and we weren't sure if we were going to recut it or not so we added can't say no i think that's yeah. one of them i think that we i think we were just like you know let's just try it and we're like Shoot. yeah this is happening <laughs> yeah yeah oh man Dude, well, really appreciate you taking some time to do this tonight. Yeah. I I wish we got to see you more. I, uh, maybe we should just uh, hang virtually more often. Yeah, I know what. Whatever we got to do. <laughs> I'm so, sure, are y'all are y'all hitting the road here soon? Or I mean, well, no one's hitting the road soon, are they? Weirdly, Thursday we're uh, we're going. Yeah, we just got a call today to see if we wanted to go open for John Party Thursday. Yeah. The safe. <laughs> safe show uh, right. it's a drive-in show in a parking lot in jacksonville florida so we're we're gonna head down there that'll be awesome i'm jealous yeah yeah awesome. hey you want to hop in a you want to hop in a minivan with us not really no <laughs> <laughs> you can play percussion it's an acoustic I, if it's like if it's like to go get some dinner absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about driving to jacksonville yeah yeah It'd be nice I'll down fly there. down <laughs> The weather it's going to be storming it's it's like thunderstorms both days oh oh that sucks what ifs yeah well, man i said we'll make it but yeah everybody this has been phillips he engine tracked tracking engineer of the record and mix this record he's amazing and dude thank you so much for hanging out with us today we appreciate it yeah man thanks for having me it's a lot if of fun in your honor and uh in honor of Brent Cobb, who was the writer on the song, we're gonna we're gonna play the tune once you hop off here. We'll, we'll play the tune for everybody out there. A little little context of some of the record what we've been talking yeah. about. Yeah, that's great. You're gonna play the yeah. whole. You're gonna play the the way back. Yeah, we're gonna play the way back. Way back. That's awesome. I yeah, can't we, wait to check it out. We love you, man. Love you too, guys. Appreciate it. Right, See you. Talking. See you, man. Bye. Okay. Man, what a guy. Oh, thank you all for tuning in uh, and hanging out with us on here for a while. Uh, I know sometimes a little bit of the technical mumbo jumbo isn't isn't quite as sexy as like you know all the other stuff that goes into being a musician and whatnot. But it all it's all part of it. The you know learn learn a little bit of how the sausage is made. Please start talking so I can stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Just have some sausage and bacon. Um, yeah, Ben is the man. We've we've known him for so long, and that that's the cool thing about a lot of these people that we're gonna have on this this week, and into next week is um, we've known them for so long, and kind of our family here in Nashville that come, came together to help us make this record. You know, from the musicians who played with us in the studio to Ben to songwriters, the Warren Brothers yesterday. We'll have Bobby Pinson tomorrow. Brian Simpson coming up. Yeah. Matt Jenkins. You're in for a treat this week. A lot of good people. So 
Um, but today we're talking way back. Um, I think it's, it's one of my favorite sounding songs on the record. I think Ben mixed it so great. Hey, quick one more shout out to Brent Cobb. Dude, yes. Thank you for writing this song with us. And thank you for also creating magical music of your own. I love everything you've put out. Got new music out uh, that came out last Friday, like trying to steal our thunder. Pretty much stole all of it. Thanks, dude. <laughs> but no, seriously, you're We're amazing. such big fans of, of Brent yeah. Cobb. If, if y'all don't know Brent Cobb, he's like, he's he's just tapped into that. Uh, he's tapped into the dirt or something, man. He just has, <laughs> he has a beautiful sound. His records sound so amazing. Uh, his cousin, is, yes, cousin is Dave Cobb and I think he produced it, and I'm such a fan. I feel like he's got a way of uh, the. There's a patience to the the music, and then the lyrics are just so chock full of like details and and wonder and just kind of I don't know beauty. I've I've never heard an artist do what he does. It just it sucks me in in a, in a way. I don't know. It makes me it's go like, places I haven't gone it's like yet. Don Williams and John Prine had a baby or something. Put it, yeah. Um, I love it. This is the first list. I mean, me, I had written songs with Brent and Anthony had written songs with Brent Cobb separately, but this is the first time we got, all three of us got together. Mm -hmm. We wrote, we wrote way back about five years ago or something. Yeah, it was a good bit ago. It was a, it was a great, great session to it. It rolled out pretty quick. We kind of got onto this chord progression and all of a sudden we had a song where we're like, all right, well, see you later. <laughs> but we're going to play it for you. Way, way back. back. Here we go. Two, three, four. You don't know me and I don't know you Yeah, we just met and the night is new The hands in our pockets, conversations making me think that We could be old friends like we go way back Talking 17 Dixie Highway, seats like way back. Like an OA mixtape always takes you way back. It's comfortable, it's coming on, familiar as forever is the future past. You and I feel like we got that kind of way back. Side A is out now. Go check that out. You'll hear this song way back and many, many others that, thank God, we had our friend Ben Phillips there along with us to, to make. Thank you, Ben. And thank you all for hanging out with us tomorrow night. We will have Bobby Pinson, and we're going to be talking about Kings of the Dairy Queen parking lot. Same time, same place, 
7 o'clock tomorrow. Bobby Benson. See y'all. See ya.